At the end of the last segment, I asked the question, why do we use rockets to launch vehicles into space? And to answer that question, I want to add one more line to my comparison chart between airplanes and satellites. So we've already noted that airplane engines are always on, while satellites are powered only at launch or if you want to change orbits. But the engine themselves are pretty different. Airplanes use jet engines while satellites are launched on rockets. And I want to rephrase the question that I had earlier of why rockets to why not jet engines? That is, why don't satellites use airplane engines to get to space? You know, we've got a lot of airplanes. They seem relatively cheap to use. And so it might be worth pausing here for a second to answer this question for yourself before we move on. So why can't we use jet engines to get into orbit? The first thing we need to do is figure out, like, how airplane engines actually work. Um, and we'll focus on commercial airplanes. So you may have seen or looked at the big round things on the bottom of the wings of a commercial airline. And at that point, you might just say, oh, yeah, that's, that's an engine. But how do these things like actually work? So here's a schematic of a jet engine cut open. And there's many different kinds of engines, but there's two common things that I want to highlight here. So first is the air intake that's at the front of the engine. And in the middle part, there's this thing called a combustion chamber. How do jet engines actually work? What happens is that air is brought into the engine. The air is then mixed with jet fuel within the combustion chamber and then is ignited. That is, you know, there's a, a glorified lighter that lights this mixture of air and jet fuel. And then there's a small controlled explosion. That explosion heats the air and that hot air, fast air is pushed out of a nozzle. And recall from last segment, we talked about Newton's third law. Newton's third law says that if you push something out one end, you get propelled in the opposite direction. And so a jet engine takes air in, ignites it, makes it fat, fast and hot, and then pushes it out very quickly in order to move forward. So that's cool. That's how jet, and jet airplanes work. So why can't we use these things to get into space? And maybe it's super obvious, but when I first thought about this, it actually wasn't super obvious to me there's no air in space. That is, jet engines need air, the oxygen in the air, in order to ignite the jet fuel. Otherwise, there's no explosion and you can't move forward. And so we definitely can't use this for a rocket. But actually, wait, there's more. Um, not only uh, if we want to get into space, we have two different problems. First, we need to bring all of our own fuel. That is, we can't use the air around us to ignite our fuel. Um, we need to bring everything with us. But second, airplane engines are attached to wings. And airplane wings have these very specific, really cool shapes um, that pushed air down to provide lift to the aircraft. And so again, no air in space, no lift. Uh, so this sounds hard. Uh, rockets have a hard time, a much harder time than airplanes. Um, but coming back to my comparison table of airplanes versus satellites, Satellites have to do a lot more work, right? They have to do a lot more. They need to get higher above the Earth's surface, and they have to move at much higher speeds. And so this is going to be really, really hard. And to get a sneak peek at like how hard this is going to be, we can add yet another line to my table. And this line is, what is the fraction of initial mass that is in fuel? That is, what is the fraction of total mass of my aircraft while it's sitting on the tarmac or my spacecraft as it's sitting on the launch pad, what percentage of that is in fuel? And so like in your car, this is not something that you think about. A car that has a full gas tank, the gas is roughly like 5% the total mass of the car. For an airplane sitting on a tarmac ready to take off, this is a higher number. Roughly 30% of the mass is in jet fuel. The rest is in, you know, the structure of the airplane and the people and the luggage and stuff. So what is the value for a space vehicle? And this number might actually surprise you. So for the space shuttle that was heading into low Earth orbit, more than 90% of the launch mass is in fuel. That is, 10% of the mass is in the structure and the payload that's actually getting to orbit. And if we want to go farther, let's say beyond Earth's orbit, at the most extreme example, the New Horizons mission, which went out to Pluto, over 99% of the initial mass of the rocket sitting on the launch pad was in fuel. The payload itself, that is the satellite that actually whizzed by Pluto and took some beautiful pictures, was less than 0.1% of the total launch vehicle. And so in the next few segments, we'll dig into why these numbers are so small and why it's actually kind of amazing that we can launch anything at all into space.